In the spring of 2020, as coronavirus spread around the world, it quickly became apparent that all of our travel plans for the year would be cancelled. We started thinking instead of a summer trip that would keep us close to home. Mallory had already been asking about someday going to see the famous grotto on the Bruce Peninsula, so renting a cottage in Topomori was a logical choice. Tobermory is a small town, less than 4,000 people, at the northern tip of the Bruce Peninsula that separates Georgian Bay from the rest of Lake Huron. It's adjacent to both Bruce Peninsula National Park, where the famous grotto is located, as well as Fathom 5 National Marine Park. This is home to 22 shipwrecks that have been well preserved in the bay's clear cold water, as well as a number of lighthouses. We booked our cottage, called Jake's Place, while short-term rentals in Ontario were still shut down. Then, it was a matter of waiting with fingers crossed to see if the province would lift the restriction, which it did in June. Our trip was on. Get the in the car. Here she is. Beautiful spot. Living room with a nice stone fireplace and view out to the lake. Cool. Hey, hey. Is it okay? That's awesome, isn't it? It's beautiful here. I bought, I bought this place for us. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the, uh, what's it called, the, the Chichimon? Yeah. This guy's got a turn, or else he's going to crack the injuries. couple of hours to settle in and hang out by the water before heading across the street to Shipwreck Lee's for dinner on the patio. Alright, fish and chips. Another fish and chips. That's here at least. On our first full day at the cottage, we had nothing planned except for relaxing the day away down at the water's edge. Chad and Liam took the paddle boards out for their first big test. Our cottage was located on Big Tub Harbor, just under a kilometer away from some of Tobermory's most notable shipwrecks. The guys set off on a recon mission to check them out. This was an ambitious undertaking. Georgian Bay was definitely some rougher water than we had experienced before.
On Tuesday morning, we had reservations to visit the grotto inside Bruce Peninsula National Park. Thank you. Recently, this scenic cave on the Georgia Bay shoreline has been overrun with Instagram tourists. And a few years ago, the National Park instituted a reservation system. That system became even more important this year when social distancing measures limited capacity to half of normal levels. We had a four hour window for our visit. The kids were hoping to do some cliff jumping, but we decided to start out with some hiking in the hopes that the day would warm up a bit first. So we began our visit by trying to find Overhanging Point, a location that Chad and I had first visited on a trip to the park 20 years ago. Okay, so I don't think this is it though, this because- This is not it at all. Yeah. If this was it- well, when you're, Whenever, when you're out on it, you don't even realize it. No, I know, but and the picture- And then you had to go back around this way to see it. Yeah. The picture of us- Just so there. There. Can you see it? You can see it? The thing about Overhanging Point is that it's not obvious that you're on it while you you're on it. On no, the these hand. these trees are not 20 years old. These trees are older than that. Uh, no, I think it's even longer than that, though. That's what I thought. Um, I'd say there's a good chance that's it. After finding the point, we headed to the grotto itself. But as with so many other things this year, the grotto was canceled. Entry into the cave was not permitted for social distancing reasons. I don't know how you would climb in there anyway. We've done it before though, right? Yeah. With the grotto itself being inaccessible for swimming, we went instead to Indian Head Cove. This spot is just as beautiful and allows people to spread out a bit more. But although the day had warmed up, the wind had not died down and the water was pretty rough. It was okay for swimming, carefully, but cliff jumping was definitely a no-go. Getting in wasn't too bad. It was getting out that was the problem. Except when you're like two sets heading over your nose in the water. <laughs> Famished after all the swimming and hiking, and with the meter having run out on our reservation window, we left the park and hit up the famous Takamori Taco Truck for lunch. Then added a one-two punch of Canadiana by chasing the tacos with the Nanaimo bars and butter tarts from Little Cove Bakery. Wednesday morning got off to a slow start when the boat tour that we'd booked in advance was cancelled at the last minute due to mechanical failure. Well, better to find out before boarding than once we'd set sail. Liam and I took advantage of the free morning by setting off on the long paddle down to the far end of Big Tub Harbour. It's an extremely scenic trip past lots of multi-million dollar real estate. There are two shipwrecks at the head of the harbour. The smaller of the two is a steamer called the City of Grand Rapids, and it sank in 1907. Visibility of the wreck used to be excellent, but the lake is at a record high water level right now, so it's a bit more difficult to see. Just north of the city of Grand Rapids is a schooner called the Sweepstakes that sank in 1885. The hull of the boat is nearly intact, making it a bit easier to see, though I still needed to make several passes over the boat to really figure out what I was looking at.
No Canadian vacation is complete without a stop at a Beaver Tails pastry shop. We walked into town later that day to treat ourselves. What kind is this? Um, Lucky Charms and Ice Night. Mel, that looks gross. <laughs> the old standby, Killaloo Sunrise. <laughs> Back at the cottage, we set up shop with our own individual activities. Mallory got busy trying to tame the local chipmunk population while I made progress on my summer reading list and Chad and Liam built another fire. What is for dinner tonight? A dog. An octo dog. Pants all melted. Don't put your face directly over it though, it's gonna be steamy. Stab it, cut it. Look at that. Popcorn perfection. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, that's good, that's good. Like it and burn it. If you want it burns, it's just a matter of how much you like to burn it. Thursday started out rainy. We took it slow and stayed entertained with Sudoku puzzles and electronics. What have you got here? We got some pizzas for us for lunch. Is that not yours? Pizzas. Pizzas. The rain cleared up in the afternoon, just in time for our second reservation at the grotto. We had booked two times just in case of inclement weather. We decided to make the most of our park entry by visiting Halfway Log Dump before our timed ticket to the grotto, and we were glad that we did. Swimming conditions were much better than they had been on Tuesday. Halfway Log Dump is an unfortunate name for a beautiful location that was once connected to the logging industry. Today, it's a day-use location in Bruce Peninsula National Park, popular for hiking, bouldering, and swimming. We had the last timed entry of the day at the grotto and made our way there after spending a few hours at Halfway Log Dump. Water conditions were also good in this part of the park. Lots of people were swimming and the kids would get their chance to do some cliff jumping after all. We stayed through our entire window and were one of the last vehicles to leave at the end of the night. Friday morning was our rebooked glass bottom boat tour to the shipwrecks in Flower Pot Island. This was a bit nerve wracking since it was our longest public exposure to anyone since the pandemic began. Masks were mandatory on board the boat and capacity was limited to 50%. Still, once the boat approached the shipwrecks, most people forgot about social distancing. Leave 
This is a better view than what we got it's when we were paddle boarding. The other one's not the whole ship. It was good to get back out on deck and after a 15 minute crossing, we were on the island. Truthfully, there's not a whole lot more to do on Flowerpot Island than there is on the mainland. It's pretty, and the sea stacks on the east side of the island are unique. There are a few kilometers of hiking trails to check out too, but mostly we spent our time on the shoreline, in the water, and soaking up the views. Over the course of the morning that we were on the island, the cloud cover that had started the day dispersed, and when the sun came out, the shoreline took on the same beautiful turquoise hues that we had seen in other parts of Georgian Bay. Mallory ended the day with some stand-up paddleboard yoga. She probably should have worked her way up to the headstand. Perfect! The flattest ever! On our last day at the cottage, we woke up to a lake that was calmer than it had been any day all week. It called for another trip down to see the shipwrecks, this time with swim goggles for a closer look. I'm gonna jump in. You interested? I would like to see a whale just pop up. No, I don't think so. That would be cool though, wouldn't it? Mal, don't play with it. <laughs> That's exactly what she's doing. Give it to him now. <laughs> Can you kick it fit one more here? Whoa! Oh. 
With the clock running out on our rental, we spent our last few hours hanging with the chipmunks, indulging in ice cream, and playing bocce ball. A little bit of a strategy thing, or a little bit of a thing. We gotta... And then we ended our week the same way it began, with another dinner at Shipwreck Lee's. And of course, we had to have one last campfire. <gasps> there he is! There he is! <laughs> Just when we thought our week was over and had started packing up for the trip home, we had Just one last like bit of excitement with an uninvited house guest. Oh, there he went. He, the, he went! he went around this corner and like under the blue chair. But he, there he is! There he is! There he is! He's over. He's, oh, he's under the heater. Under he's under the heater. Oh, he's in the corner. There, there. Oh! He's in the screen and the... His family. Yes, this is the silly thing. We shouldn't be... Family's probably still losing we, here. we shouldn't be afraid of a mouse when we have chipmunks crawling all over us on